A lot of people are afraid of Russia. Are you afraid of Russia? A little bit. Today on Grantham, we're gonna be testing out the legendary Vant Ballistic Shield. Now, if you're not familiar with the legendary Vant Ballistic Shield, how heavy is it? It's pretty heavy. It's not heavy. Come on, lift it up, get it up. So, heavy. this is used by a lot of soldiers and it is the stuff of legend. Legend has it that these can withstand Dishka fire, that these can take an RPG hit, survive, but not the Russian operator behind them. The question is, what is the ballistic rating on this shield? Today on Grantham, we're gonna be shooting it with both Russian and American firepower, and we're gonna conduct some scientific tests here. Now, before we get into it, of course, we have to thank the biggest sponsor of this channel. The biggest sponsor of this channel is the Sonoran Desert Institute. Go check them out if you're looking to get into gunsmithing. They are the people to go to. A big thank you to them as well. And of course, we have to thank the sponsor of this particular video, Aura. On the topic of protection, brings us to the sponsor of this video, Aura. Now, do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is? And surprisingly, it is not putting stocks on illegal SBRs. Mega base. What it actually is, is identity theft, and it's not a joke. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. Now, for many people, they're surprised when identity theft happens, but the fact of the matter is it happens to a lot of us. It's happened to me, and it's happened to many people out there, so you need to make sure to protect yourself. So what is Aura? Aura is identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus all wrapped into one easy to use package. Now, personally, when I used Aura, my information was found over six times. Now, when it comes to fraud, seconds matter. You can connect your bank accounts, your credit cards, right to the app to make sure that you're alerted up to four times faster than the other competitors out there. Now, their VPN will keep you anonymous. Unlike this guy who's chipped, it'll keep your personal information and your browsing history safe and secret. And of course, the antivirus software will stop malware and other viruses that could possibly cause harm to your devices. Now, Aura actually has a free trial. Get on there, check it out. Comment with how many times Aura finds your personal information because that is hella, hella scary. Protect you and your family from America's fastest growing crime and go and see if any of your information has already been compromised. Go check it out, link right below, aura.com forward slash Grantham. Pretty hard to remember. A <laughs> big thank you to Aura. Let's get back to the video, guys. And of course, all the ammunition is provided for by Norma. A big thank you to them. Finally, Micah, what have we forgotten? The Patreon. The Patreon. A big shout out to our Patreon people. Get in there. Micah is posting everything I actually don't want post posted, and it's uh, it's terrible. But I am I'm answering questions, and it's busting, I guess, as the uh, kids would say. Right, Micah? Yeah, some say it's not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, I have forgotten, but certainly not by me. Vant Shields. Let's get into it. Okay, so Mike, take it. Why are you guys wearing helmets? Well, for the I reason. I always wear one. So if you want to take a closer look at this, uh, the Vance is a very interesting concept. It's based on entering rooms for very close quarters combat. As you can see here, it would be carried by a front leading man entering into a room. You can see we have a really good ballistic shield right here that they can look through. So we're gonna be, of course, testing what this can withstand later on. And then beyond that, we have great ballistic protection according to the legends. So I'm really excited to shoot the main portion of the shield to see what it can withstand. To be clear, level three, level four um, in armor technology, typically for a level four for an American armor plate, will be able to withstand one round of 30-06 armor piercing. I, I, I don't know what this is gonna end up as. Micah, what armor rating do you think this is? I don't know. I've talked to so many people and heard like the craziest stories and then the lamest. Every Russian airsofter I talk to, and they know everything, has told me that this thing can take a dish gun, no problem. That would make it some crazy armor classification level that we don't have. I'm, I don't know. I'm excited to see if this protects their, their foots, their footsies down there. Why? Um, well, because they need to be able to move. That's, that's a critical portion of any combat experience is, uh, I just like feet. This guy is actually fairly heavy, but as you can see, you have different ways of holding it. So if we come over to our stand right here, we're going to be placing it 
right up against here, we have our cardboard targets up to detect any type of rounds that go through. So we're gonna go ahead and lean that guy up right against there. And uh, we're gonna go talk about the guns we're gonna be using. We'll be starting with the Glock 17 firing NATO standard ammunition. That is 124 grains plus P. From there, if it can stop a nine millimeter, it can easily stop buckshot. So we're not gonna do that on it. We'll be moving over to the AKM. So this particular AKM does have a whip machine suppressor on it. Very cool. And we'll be firing just standard ball ammunition out of this AKM, one of the most common weapons and probably one of the most commonly encountered. From there, we'll be moving on to the AK-105, commonly seen in the battlefields all over Eastern Europe right now, especially in the Ukraine. So if we take a look here, we are firing standard Russian military ammunition 7N6, which is probably one of the most common 545 rounds overseas. Going over here, we have a URGI. We'll be firing M855A1 which are very spicy boys and has a pretty good armor piercing effect. And of course, for my Giga Chads out there, we have the M16 coming out here with not as spicy, but still pretty good M855, which is a great round out of a 20 inch barrel. Very interested to see how this does. I would say this does possibly have a chance of penetrating it simply due to the speed of the projectile. Micah, you agree? Yeah, maybe. You it's just so good. I'm so, I don't know what armor class it could be. I'm so interested to find out. So From there, we have the FAL, of course, here to put down commies again, firing M80 ball, just a standard 308 ball cartridge. And to once again, teach everyone a lesson, we have the venerable M1 Grand, firing 30-06 armor piercing. Very spicy round and will defeat most armor unless it is level four. I think this will be the true test right here. Micah, agreed? 100%. If it defeats that, then the weight is justified. Man, the M1 Grand, like, it was made in 1943 for this particular guy. It's just like, you know, it's just tired, man. It's just tired that it has to keep. How many times do I have to teach you this lesson, old man? We, of course, have the Benelli M4 to test out the visor. And to end things off, we have the sniper rifle from Halo. This is a Steyr HS50 firing extremely spicy 50 caliber ammunition. Uh, I don't believe there's any way in hell that armor is gonna be able to stop this at all. Apparently it can stop a dishka, so. If it could stop a dishka, I guess technically, that it's bullshit, dude. There's no way it's gonna stop. It's not gonna, the Grand's gonna take it down. Talk is cheap, ammunition is expensive. Let's do it. Ammunition from Norma, NATO, nine mil. Well, that shield didn't appear to move at all. All right, Charlie, mark that. Careful, please. Yeah, well, all the way through, you know. Just. So we have our nine millimeter impact right here. Um, looks like it went through right there. And then the question is, did it exit? Nothing. Micah, come check this out. Uh, zero bulging, which is always good. You don't want that happening. Another note is that this is made by Fort. Man, I would hate to carry this thing around. Even in like CQB, it's just kind of heavy, dude. And why did they make the Velcro red? Well, oh, uh, to anger a bull. All right, we have the AKM firing standard ball ammunition, 123 grain. Let's see how it goes. It's got a little jiggle. We have the impact right there. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. And we have... Uh, zero bulging that I can feel in this. That's fine. Uh, nothing exited. It stopped uh, an AKM, no problem. And that was at about 25 meters or so. So question is, how can it withstand uh, some of these spicier rounds? I don't know. I don't know if it was the shield or the fact that it's a dirty commie rifle that did it. So it's you kind of like the lesser. All right, next up, we have the AK-105. This one built by Jim Fuller. This is about as close as you can get to a Russian AK-105 without um, smuggling weapons or being in the Ukraine. Firing 7N6, military ammunition. This isn't launching the projectile as fast as an AK-74, because it has a 12.5 barrel, but it doesn't lose too much uh, velocity, so I'm interested to see, especially being that it's a fairly normal variant to see in combat. We have the AK-105 impact right there. You can go ahead and mark that for me, Charlie. Thank you. All right, let's see if we got any penetration. No. So this tear was already there to be clear. And actually the tear does show us something interesting. If you want to take a look at this, see the material that we actually have underneath the bulletproof material. It seems to be some type of composite of 
looks like Kevlar, perhaps Aramid fibers as well. It is an older technology um, and it leads me, it, I definitely have some questions about its uh, ability to be even rated level three, which is coming up with our M80 ball and uh, 55 grains. So we'll see. So right here, we have the URGI standard, pretty much M4A1 upgraded. We are firing M855A1. You see right there. Let's go ahead and let's send it. Didn't see a lot of movement. Wonder if that means straight through. There's the M855A1 impact right there. Nice little clean hole. The question is, is did it go through? Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. All right, coming to the back, and uh, no, no penetration. It stopped the mighty M855A1. Um, not that it's specifically like the end all be all, but uh, it's good performance right there. Hey, those are screws. Those are screws. Standard green tip, just like the 90s would have loved. And firing it out of the M16. Let's give it a shot. Okay, shot it right side. Didn't see a lot of movement. I wonder if the Giga Chad got through. Okay, so we have our little hole from the M855 out of the 20 inch M16. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that, Charlie. Yeah. Question is, did it go through? Micah, what do you think? Uh, no. If A1 didn't, I don't have any faith. Man, did not oh, wow. even bulge it. Yeah, I honestly would have expected a little bit of bulge. Really? Yeah, uh, from an M855 M8, M8 out of a 20 inch. A, a little bulge j or a lot, a large bulge? Teeny bulge, like not a big one. Something. Uh, FAL next, right? Right arm of the free world? Yeah. M80's yeah. gotta do something, It'll man. It'll at least bend it or disarm it. It's gotta. All right, we got the Kami Stomper 3000 here with M80 ball, 21 inch barrel. Don't foul me now. Ooh, that jiggles, that jiggles. All right, we have our M80 ball impact from the FAL. Micah, what are you thinking, dude? Uh, did it just form the shield? Like, is it bent at all? Well, we'll find out. So right here, so what's kind of harder to quantify, but if you press in on it, like with the other impacts, it feels pretty steady. This one feels a little bit more mushy from the M80 impact. I wonder, man, wow. nothing. Wow. Well, that's at least level three. I would say that's pretty much undeniable at this point. What's uh, next, 30 uh, odd six? Man, the Garand's gotta come out of retirement and try this to teach. This is the make or break. Is this it is three or is it four? If, the grand, if it stops the Garand, color me impressed, dude but I think the Grand's gonna put it down into the dirt once and for all. You know what though? It's not that impressive because that thing weighs so much, it should stop everything. If this thing can't stop a dishka, miss me with that. Gorgeous M1 Grand with armor piercing 30 out six, sold to me by the US government. Thank you, CMP. I saw something behind it. <sighs> Why does it weigh that much? We saw a puff of smoke. Uh, here's the impact right here. It is close. We will be doing another shot after this. Will you mark that one, Charlie? Thank you. All right, Micah, what do you think? Yeah, I think it went straight through, man. Easy too, like clean. Oh, 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 oh no! Is that asbestos? I don't know. Yeah. That took some chunks Look with at it, the dude. Size of that. I can't even cover that with my hand. Yeah, he's got a point. What do you think about this, Charlie? I mean, honestly, seeing how it just went right through this shield, you could line up three, maybe even seven, malnourished Japanese soldiers, and it would go right through them. You're gonna win, you're gonna win that rap battle ten times out of ten. Now people are gonna get mad and say that the first impact was too close. Well, I'm sorry, I'm a good shot, but we're gonna shoot at a uh, piece of the shield that is not impacted or no shots are close to it, just to prove the point that this will work just as well even uh, in those locations. Well, here's the impact. There's the exit. Uh, forgive me for uh, using an American phrase, but uh, 
like a hot knife through butter. So we have the Steyr HS50 right here, basically the sniper rifle from Halo. We'll be using a very spicy 50 cal um, at an extreme range right here of 25 meters. Beware of Coriolis effect. Firing. Uh, we have the impact right there and we have uh, someone who's dead on the other side. So this would sit at about a level three armor rating, I would say, because the, the Garand went straight through, but it could stop 55 grain, it could stop 308. So uh, we'll put the Vant at a level three and that is a heavy level three. Like the heaviest level three. I would not want to carry this man. For sure. Honestly, I think if they would have just gone up to a level four, then they would have stopped everything. But he's got a good point. Uh, can you imagine though? Like, it, it's wild to me that you actually see Russians running this still. And, and I understand it's a, it's a doctrine type thing, but like, that's a lot of weight to throw on somebody. Like, you're gonna. They have that spectrum strength. Now we're gonna be shooting the face visor. Now the reason for using a shotgun is I figure. There's a good chance of running the shotguns. Everyone has them, they're very ubiquitous, and if that glass is gonna stop anything, it's gonna be buckshot. I consider that a good test as that buck pattern is gonna spread out. There's a greater chance of it hitting the visor. Let's see if it works. Yep. All right, so right here we have the visor. You can see we have our buckshot impacts right there. Let me mark it, make sure. Thank you, Charlie. Well, let's see if it came came through. And so, because, so it actually shattered on the inside. So, uh, unless you're wearing some type of eye protection, um, that's gonna be a bad day for you. Now, I will say, it did stop it, um, but there is some penalty. What, what? Can we do the feet? Let's see if we're gonna do the feet. Yeah. Okay. We'll now be testing the soft flap that that is under the Vant shield. Why is that, Charlie? I like feet. I want to make sure they're protected. Next up, feet. So we have NATO 124 grain plus P. Let's see how that works. I think this is mostly for shrapnel protection, but I know that swung a lot. What do you think, Charlie? I hope, because I've already bought three of them. <gasps> oh! Wait! Wait, wait. Nice! Look at that. Stopped it. Wait, that's really surprising. Yeah, I know, I know what that look is. Let's do it. We're gonna shoot it again. AKM, ball ammunition, little flap. That looked like that one. Yeah, I also heard tires. Yeah. Yep. yep, okay. So, Vant Shield, final synopsis. So what we have right here is we have a shield that is about, it's about, Level three, level three A, it's gonna stop a lot of your common rifle threats that are non-armor rated. Now, once we get into armor piercing, this thing uh, stands no chance. Uh, when it comes to our little flap right there, that thing is ready for shrapnel, possibly nine millimeter. And uh, this is a heavy shield for what you get. This is a very heavy shield. Um, as far as this stopping a dishka, false. Stopping an RPG blast, uh, maybe shrapnel, I don't think the blast itself. We're gonna at least stop shrapnel to the feet. We know that. Charlie's got a point. Um, it's a vant, dude. Something I would never want to carry as a as a service member, having served in the military. Uh, that's that, That's just <laughs> the vant. Uh, I'm glad that we proved some people wrong. So a lot of people talked this up as being able to stop absolutely any round to have ever been invented. Clearly not. It's not level four. So that advice, Charlie. Go out and do something nice for your wife or your girlfriend after you watch this video. Um, and for dudes who carry an XD, go out and do something nice for your boyfriends.